And I've got a hunch we're on the front foot. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. I don't like banging on about South Australia all the time, but I do. But we appear to be right on the front foot. You know, we're talking about the Space Centre, which gives us the ability to put rockets, which gives us the ability to have nanotech, which is all happening here in in South Australia. Yeah. So, you know, you could, um, exactly. Well, look, I'm a passionate Australian. You live in South Australia. But um, South Australia's DNA is, is a lot of firsts we're here. Um, whether it's from a social standpoint, but in agriculture, you know, naturally we've been from the stump jump plow to so many different things. I was doing a project for government a decade ago or so, and um, you know, and when I really researched, there's some really proud things South Australia's done. So not to say that we're. I'll give an example. We've got great beaches, so is Sydney, so is Queensland, that. But maybe in South, it's a proximity to the beaches, right? You can still live in the city and be there <laughs> in ten minutes. <laughs> Sydney and Melbourne might not be like that, right? Bond so day. two and a half hours, yeah, from the city. and that's when you live in this block away, right? So um, it's just the way it is. And so South Australia naturally has had this innovative, um, you know, it's a like it's a challenger brand, you know, um, never bigger, always smarter sort of thing. So. I think that's something that uh, uh, as a state, in particular in our agriculture sector, we've had from the day dot. So it does, it does bring it all together, which do you see many uh, generations coming through with, with farming? So do you see the, you know, the younger crew taking over? Are you seeing that? Well, we're or? starting to see that. So, you know, Dad and I are passionate about farming and we've got a few farms ourselves. And I guess the only reason we're able to buy some of those farms is because the younger generation didn't want to go and some of these things have been in a, in a you know families only one or two genera you know they've only changed hands one or two times yeah. um it's, it's probably early 1900s but, or something yeah but pleasingly you're starting to see young people come out one of my greatest i guess fears or challenges how does a young chris thomas who loves the land how does he go and get capital go and say i want to be a farmer yeah right it's it's very very hard so this is where i'd like to see in the future whether it's governments leveraging their balance sheets, super funds, yep, super funds will invest for super funds, but yep. what about giving young people a go? So if you're born in the city and you want to be a, um, a farmer, it's going to be near on impossible. So, but as returns have got better for farmers in the last decade, you're starting to see people stay on the land, they're getting better, edu- they're going away for education, but coming back home, which, yep. is, which is great. And um, so that's giving me heart because as I said, without farmers, we don't have a business. So. I've definitely seen a trend in the last, yeah, under ten years of younger people staying on the farm, which is which is great, um, which is really encouraging. And let's face it, farmer wants a wife. Wow, um, you know, good New looking series guys. coming up now. Yeah, good looking guys on farms, and check out the chicks they're bringing to them as well. Yeah, like it was all they got to do was apply. That's like, it. So things are looking up for the farmers, and it's a tough business. There's it is. No, there's no doubt that well, I think you can sometimes you can almost underestimate how much they're actually doing for for our economy and and our own our own selves. You know, we're not importing too much unless it's the cheap shit. Which no. oh, can I say? That? Yeah, I did. Um, unless yeah. it's you know we have it here. You know, Spencer Golf prawns, like, you know, it, it, all, all our, pr- our product here, you know, Morton Bay Bugs, obviously not South Australia, but oh my God. Like, so all of this is here and we need to be very protective of it and very protective of our farmers. And, and we've just had recently, well, we've had bushfires, but just, just before that was droughts. It's, yeah. you know, farmers cop it the whole they time. They do. They look at any primary production. You're at the, by its very nature of the word, you're at the start. And as I said, I think I qualified to go do spend a bit of time looking around the world. And, you know, our farmers have faced, have very little subsidies and, you know, they've got some significant barriers um, when we look at some of the markets in terms of tariffs. And now I think um, governments over, over, you know, successive governments over time, we're starting to get free trade agreements, but they take time. Yeah. Um, you know, they really, but the farmers dealing, we know in Australia, we're the driest continent in, you know, in the world. So just as one drought breaks, yep. it's the start of another one. Yep. So, but their resilience and, you know, it's the sort of thing we need to get behind them. And I think in this pandemic, if you call it, that we're living in today, people are actually starting to feel a little bit of, um, uh, you know, a bit of compassion or sovereignty now. Like, hey, we better make sure that we can look after because we're lucky. We've always just turned up. There's been food on our table. A lot of other countries aren't self-sufficient. Yeah. Australia is, and we need to protect that. Without farmers, we won't have that. Yeah, and that's 
Well, I've, I've, I actually haven't looked at it. And, and like can that. I tell you, farmers don't want handouts either, right? I don't want, you know, there's a misconception out there at times. Um, you know, a lot of farmers, like in any industry, there's good and bad, let's yep. be honest. <laughs> and those really proficient farmers are planning for that next drought. So, that, well, well, uh, the old saying, making hay while the sun shines, yep. you know, they're preparing and that's some of the things. But, um, you know, they do an incredible, incredible job. And it's good to just start to see what we'll see the city. It's just starting to acknowledge that, I think, in a time like now, you know, we're sitting okay. There might be a bit of panic buying, which I'm sure that yep. you're loving. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely not complaining. And no. we're one of the lucky ones. We've got food. Yeah, but that's the thing. We've got food. You know, okay, we might not have it here today, but we'll have it for you tomorrow. Now, there's countries around the world that don't have that. If it's gone today, it's not here for another two weeks. So, um, you know, the farmers have been able to really support our country in a time of need.